Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and this is The Piracy Show. Now, on today's show, a continuation of yesterday's adventure. Of course, we had our adventure with the gambler, we made a bunch of money, and I was kind of sitting here and I was thinking, well, like, should I just keep pushing my luck? Should I, you know, just keep going out to try and see what the money situation is, like how far I can take it, you know, would that be an interesting way to go? Cause, I mean, there's a lot of elements from the game that are still missing. Obviously, like the real hardcore piracy just isn't really here yet or possibly not here. But I kind of wanted to, um, I wanted to test things out. And some people have been saying in the comments to get medical supplies from the research bases. And I guess, you know, when I visited the research bases during the early PTU, either it wasn't there or I probably crashed or I didn't know what I was looking for. So I didn't know about that. I, I mean, I knew you could find medical supplies at crash ships and those were particularly valuable. And so I thought, well, all right, let's go find some of these research bases. Now, a quick cursory inspection of Damar didn't reveal any, though, I don't know, probably there are, there is one there. I've just missed it. But... I decide to head over to Yella because I know I've seen one there and uh, maybe grab some medical supplies and see if this is worth any remarkable amount of money. So after getting down to the research base on Yella and spending uh, more than a few minutes looking around finding where the actual trade interface was, um, I found it and I went okay here's the medical supplies let's check this out now what I found was that even though medical supplies yeah are a seriously good way to make money they really really are especially if you're in a cut list or say a freelancer because you can fill that ship up on these things they do tend to run out there's only like a finite amount at that location so something like a caterpillar you wouldn't fill it here I mean, even if you bought all the agricultural supplies and all the medical supplies, you wouldn't fill your Caterpillar here. And trust me, because I found out a little later on when I started to get exceptionally greedy. Now, as I was doing this, I was kind of thinking about it in, in kind of a pirate's way. And I was thinking, okay, you know, this... This raises certain interesting questions, the way the economy is sort of working out in this first iteration. One, once you kind of get a little bit of seed money, you can afford to buy ever greater amounts of stuff and then sell it on, right? So very quickly, what started as just a random trip to a moon to with zero credits turned into hundreds of thousands of credits. I mean, if this had been all continuous gameplay on a fully stable server where everything, like everything that we have now in 3.0, if everything worked perfectly, including we get warnings, hint, hint, CIG, when a server's about to shut down, um, then realistically, I could be in the millions of credits right now. And... You know, that kind of says a few things. One, that when you're looking at a multi-crew option in the game, when you're or a multi-crew ship, and when you're looking at how am I going to make that work, it becomes immediately obvious that that is not an entirely unreasonable proposition, that you can actually afford to pay people a decent wage to help you out and man your ship, right? Like, you don't have to, like, even worry about NPCs. Let's say... You have a friend who just has, um, you know, like an Aurora. Like they've just bought an Aurora game pack. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'll check out the game. You can immediately bring this person on to even say you're cutless and you're already making hundreds of thousands of credits in this iteration of the economy. Even a ship as simple as the cutlass, and you see another cutlass here doing the same thing I'm doing, is a real you know is a real money earner like we, you know we've talked about it using it as a pirate ship we've talked about it using it as a drop ship as a ship that carries you know various ground trans well not various ground transports but only the dragonfly or other space bikes really but you know the ship with that has all these options but the very basic option of hauling cargo is proving to be really valuable you can see how you can sustain not only yourself and your ship and you can go out and you can buy better components you can go buy shields 
engines, weapons, whatever you need. But you can also afford to pay your crew and to pay them a decent wage, some, you know, enough money that would, I mean, when you look at what I'm earning right now on the Cutlass, the, the amount of money that I'm making trivializes the cost of armor, ammo. It, I mean, the biggest problem with armor and ammo and things like that is just the interface for buying them is kind of shitty. And it, it's kind of like this two-stage interface that needn't be there. It should just be like a buy button right there on the screen, like buy, buy, buy. I'm just making sure that guy isn't going into my ship. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But, um, you know, like you can easily afford to pay the people who hop on your ship a decent amount of money. And so your buddy who just has an Aurora game package, he was like, you know, I don't know about this Star Citizen thing. I'm just going to chill. You can spend all the money you want. I'll get an Aurora game package and we'll see. You can, you can see how you can very quickly just prop this guy up financially and get him moving. Now, w there are certain things that we haven't seen the cost of yet in universe. Other ships, ship weapons, things of that nature. I mean, we've seen some ship components, but what are they really good for? What kind of difference do they really make? Is it really that notable? Eh, the descriptions are a little bit vagueish. So, you know, we don't really know how all that's going to factor in, but we're very quickly making money. I'm just checking the back of my ship to make sure this guy isn't stowing away. But we're still we're still making a solid amount of cash with these ships. Even the most basic ships like the Cutlass, which is once again basically a hundred dollar ship, and it's already walking away with it. You, I mean, you can see how even something as little as an Avenger Titan can make you a crap ton of money very early on in game. Now, one of the things you'll notice is uh, when I went in and I bought all these goods and filled up the ship, I bought all the medical supplies I could, and then I just filled up the rest of the space with whatever was there, agricultural, whatever the crap it is. Um, and that was just to fill space. I mean, it's, it's not going to be a really marked amount of cash, especially versus what I'm making off the medical supplies, but it should be fairly decent. But at, you know, at the same time, I'm spending now hundreds of thousands of UEC to, to make purchases, and I'm just taking them to Olisar and just dumping them on the market, and you know, I'm just moving ahead in terms of cash by leaps and bounds, and that's all within the scale of a cutlass so realistically in a fully functional game where let, let's say everything works what could you do with a caterpillar now one of the things that kind of held me back from the caterpillar is what you're about to see right now is as i'm going through and i'm selling out everything that i've made and of course yeah making big chunks of cash now i am thinking you know, maybe it's time to bring out the Caterpillar. Maybe it's time to just do this on a grand scale. And I started thinking like, oh man, I could maybe make a video where it's like, oh shit, look, look guys, I made a billion dollars on the market. The problem is the market's quite limited and there's only so much there. The truth is there really isn't uh, enough to justify the Caterpillar and I, I guess, in, in a good way, you know, because the Caterpillar is a troubled ship right now. Uh, it has some problems, and the game is a little bit troubled as well. It has its own problems. But I started thinking, okay, but think on, think on a bigger scale. Like, let's say I go to this station, and I just clean out everything, right? Let's say I, I don't just take the medical supplies. I take everything. On a Caterpillar, I can do that because I've got all the cargo space. Once again, just checking for stowaways. We'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that. Um, but I'm thinking, okay, but if I take the Caterpillar, maybe I can do the rounds. You know, I can start to hit all the other bases and I can just take everything they got. Just completely empty out all their stock because I'm, I'm getting up there in cash. Empty out all their stock 
and then just take it all to all sorry one giant haul and see how much that's worth that would probably make a kick-ass youtube video how much can you really make with one full caterpillar hitting all the locations now there are certain ones that i'm going i would avoid like uh, like kudrior or the what's it the uh, the little mom and pop mining operation over on uh, selen but or Chellen or Kellen or whatever it's however it's pronounced but um, you know those don't have landing pads so you know we've already had a cargo hold full of mediocre shit lost to us when the caterpillar flipped over trying to take off on uneven ground so or really not all that uneven ground so do we really want to risk those? No, but all these other big sites, they've got landing pads. I mean, should we take a shot at doing something that big? Well, first, let's go hit up another research post, like right here, and see if they do have other supplies. I mean, maybe I can just go hit all the research posts, grab all their supplies, and then bring them back and sell them, and just whatever else they have, just use that to fill up space. And the game overall seemed to be cooperating with those ideas. It really did. Things seemed to be heading in a pretty solid direction. Even though the research post on Yella, I kind of emptied it out. The research post on, I'm just saying Chellen for now. The research post here actually ended up having a fair amount of goods. And so very quickly, I was able to fill up the ship again. And then I start thinking, okay, then Caterpillar becomes a lot more interesting. And then going back to the point where I'm talking about bringing a crew along, you can see that if you're moving goods of this, you know, of this value with this kind of difference between what you pay and, uh, you know, what you end up selling it for, you could easily sustain a fairly large crew. I mean, it would probably end up being uh, mostly newer players or players who are just getting started who needed that extra kick to uh, get moving and get making money or just wanted to play socially. And, w you know, as long as they're making a fair wage, they really don't care as long as, you know, they get to do whatever they want to do. Maybe they just want to be turret gunners. Maybe they just want to be chief engineers or shield operators or navigators or something like that. So it kind of put all of these things into a very nice perspective that yeah you know what you can make a decent amount of money you can pay all these people if we end up getting income sharing tools in the game that's going to be a big thing i think um you know when we were talking previously about you know stuff that they they should implement in or you know things that i would like to see implemented into the game income sharing i think is a is a big one I think it's really up there because, uh, you know, there are various members of my org who still aren't playing 3.0 yet. And, uh, you know, when they get in, you get your 5,000 UEC. You know, the, maybe they're like, well, I got to go get armor. I got to get this. I got to get that. I got to go do this thing, that thing, the other thing. And it's just like, you know, like, whereas I could just go into a store and it's like, dude, I could just buy you everything and just hand it to you. Or I could just give you. 30,000 UEC and just say go nuts go get your shit and uh, I'll come pick you up right w so I hopefully we get to see that sometime soon is uh, some level of income sharing or maybe even like profit sharing like let's say every member of your crew depending on rank or grade or whatever gets like a certain share of the profit from a run so like captain would get the biggest first officer would get the next biggest and then on downwards to the lowest ranks if that's how you end up organizing your ship but you know obviously that's a system that needs to be fully fleshed out and speaking of systems that need to be fully fleshed out if you're noticing now i can't sell what i have and this is one of the things that kind of pushed me back from taking the caterpillar out again was you know the servers from time to time uh they be tripping <laughs> they don't want to work man and it's just like come on this is a huge payday for me why aren't you working and so this is one of those things that kept pushing me back from the caterpillar i mean greed was pushing me definitely to go get the caterpillar and 
you know, make another make another run, you know, take the gambler out. But it was stuff like this that kept pushing back. So I decided, you know what, since technically my ship is at Olisar, it's at a place where I can call up ships, not just where it would be quote unquote stored, but uh, one of the important things is you have to be able to call up a ship and they've removed that ability at a lot of the sites apart from here, Levski and uh, Grim Hex. And this is a problem that'll come back to bite me in the ass later. But you know what? I figure since it's here, it should be safe. I can log out and then log back in and try again. So even though it was a bit of an inconvenience, I logged back in. And not only that, I got a better price for my medical supplies on this server. So I ended up, you know, with over 300,000 credits. And all of this, like, think about it. Yesterday... I started off with nothing, <laughs> nada. I hit up one rec site, grabbed some crates, and went, ooh, like, this is a good rec site, guys. It's like 250 UEC at this rec site, ooh. And now I'm like 300,000. <laughs> it's like, rec sites, what rec sites? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Let's just, I mean, trading kind of totally eclipsed that. Now, this brings us to one of the things that I wanted to talk about, you know, in this video. And, you know, when I was earlier when I was checking the backs of the crates to make sure nobody was stowing away in my ship. In a broader way, like when the economy is like this, when the amount of income you can earn is almost unlimited, only limited really by time. Um, and the facilities you start off with, though, you can see that in a more fleshed out game, even with a very basic ship like a Cutlass or even an, an Avenger Titan, you can very quickly start making some real money. So you have to kind of ask a question. Um, in an economy that fosters player financial growth as aggressively as this one does, does does piracy does it have a point now the reason why i was checking behind the crates is the only thing that i could think of that a pirate could legitimately do right now to make a serious chunk of change is to hide at one of these sites wait for someone to land buy a crap ton of goods and then while they're in there buying the goods go in into like a little spot that you know of in the ship hide behind the crates, wait for the pilot to take off, get out, of the, uh, get out of the armistice zone, then kill the pilot, steal the cargo, take it to Grim Hex with the ship, if you can even do that, and then just sell off all the cargo and just leave the ship on the landing pad. That's the only real way I could think of to make large-scale piracy viable in the current build. I mean, otherwise, you're still... I mean, you're just wandering around, just doing little shit. I mean, it, it's, n it's no big deal. Th that was really the only way that I could think of to make piracy work. But then again, how do you get to, s to the site in the first place? If you leave a ship there, you're kind of leaving a hint. Maybe you could go to one of the nearby landing spaces, or maybe I could take um, a cutlass, load up a dragonfly, and you know, get it down to the planet maybe like 100 kilometers away and then fly in the rest of the way with the dragonfly, lie in wait, and then pounce when the opportunity arrived. But realistically, I mean, think about it. All that time spent doing all of that. I mean, if you just had an Avenger Titan, you, you'd probably, you'd already own your own Cutlass. You'd already have all kinds of money. So it kind of really doesn't serve that much of a purpose the way it's kind of built out and fleshed out right now now obviously in the future more things to come but right now you know piracy is just kind of like this fun distraction it's there really isn't an effective means to getting rich as a pirate where, whereas like competitive like if you're competing you know, a trader is just making money hand over fist. And realistically, even though you can have problems along the way, I mean, y your recoveries are so fast. Now, at this point, I had just gone and I was just checking out random sites. And obviously, the income that I was getting from this trip where I had filled up the ship 
was was nothing. It's like ooh, three hundred thousand uh, or three thousand isk. Ooh, it's, it's so much. It's so great. Wow. So I said, you know what? If we're gonna do this, and if we're just gonna wander and just be hitting random sites, server the uh, servers, the servers, uh, the servers seem stable enough. So why not roll the dice again? Yes, folks, the gambler rides again. We're going to try to hit up some sites. We're just going to scoop up everything that we can carry and hopefully turn this 300,000 UEC and change into some crazy ass money. Now, remember, we're on a fresh server. So first stop, Yella. Let's just take all the medical supplies all of them if we're gonna do it let's just let's go nuts we're gonna try to grab all the medical supplies in the system drop them all at all Asar, and see just how much money we can make what could possibly go wrong all right first off the medical supplies Ooh, 172,000. No problem. Let's take them. Go, go, go. Take that. Yeah, no sweat. 170,000 USC or UEC. No problem. Eh, agricultural supplies. Well, we're going to need something to fill up all that extra space. So, yeah, let's take all that too. Man, come on. We're, we're high rollers, man. We, we got to spend that money. Now let's go over to Chellen and, uh, yeah, I still can't decide how to pronounce that planet's name. Chellen. All right, that's what it is. Now, yeah, let's get over there and let's get even more. Now, realistically, I mean, if, if we get to this site and it's full too, we can totally clean up. I mean, this could end up being almost a 400,000 credit run. Just like that. This would be so easy. No. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> Why? You. Oh. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching.